Alrighty guys, welcome to part four in the series on how to build a machine learning model using Watson Machine Learning Studio. So in the last couple of videos, we've been preparing our environment, data cleaning, feature engineering, all that good stuff. Now in this video, we're gonna start getting into the nitty gritty. So here we're actually going to start creating our model, testing and training. In the next video after this, we're going to be deploying using the REST API. Now, without further ado, let's get right into it. So in the last video, we finished creating our clean data set and output that into a CSV. Now what we can do is actually start importing this into a model and building a machine learning model in the background. So to do that, what we're gonna do is hit add project and hit this one over here, which is Watson machine learning model. So this basically allows you to apply a bunch of algorithms over your existing data set, split out your data set into a training and testing data set as well as a holdout portion, and basically iterate over that and build some predictions. Now, once you've done that, you can actually deploy it and then use it as part of an API and issue calls to the model deployed from what's in Machine Learning Studio. So what we're gonna do is we're going to create a model. So just hit that service and let's call it our predictive model. And before we can actually create this, what we need to do is set up a machine learning service. To, so to do that, we just need to hit associate. And from here, we'll create a new machine learning service. So just hit light for now, that's more than fine. And let's hit create. And leave all the defaults and hit confirm. So once this is finished spinning up, what we can do is jump back over to our predictive model page and reload and we'll be able to associate our machine learning service with our new machine learning model. Alrighty, so we've created our machine learning service. Now what we wanna do is we wanna associate that machine learning service with the model that we're about to create. So to do that, we just hit reload and you can see that that same machine learning service that we just created is now associated to this model. That's great, now we can actually start setting stuff up. So in terms of the model type, what we're gonna be doing is just using the model builder for now. We'll select our runtime, which should be the default Spark Scalar environment. And let's hit manual, because we wanna choose our own algorithms as well as defining our own features and what not. So let's hit manual and let's hit create. And this will start generating our new predictive model. Alrighty, so now what we're up to is selecting our data set. So there's three parts of this. So selecting your data, training, and then evaluating your models. So what we wanna do here is we wanna select the data set that we've cleaned. So that's gonna be our clean underscore data underscore set dot CSV. So that's the one that we just pumped out using our data refinery flow. So let's select that, then select next. And this will load up our data set. Now in the next step, what we'll be able to do is select our target variable as well as our feature variables and associate the algorithms that we wanna run across it. So this first column that we need to select here is the value to predict, AKA our target variable. So in this case, we wanna predict our price. So we'll select price as that column. And then we can also select our feature columns. Now what we're gonna do is we're just going to leave it as all. So this will use all the other columns that we've got in our CSV to predict or build predictions. So let's set that as all. Now, in terms of the type of model that we're going to create, you've actually got three different choices here. So you've got binary classification, multi-class classification, and regression. So binary classification and multi-class classification are all to do with about defining, putting stuff into categories or basically saying whether or not they meet a certain class or not. So for example, binary classification would often be used for predicting employee churn, determining if something is um, yes or no. Multi-class classification is about putting stuff into different categories. So if you're trying to predict different types of species of flower or uh, looking at different types of customers and trying to ban them into different categories. Regression on the other hand is about predicting continuous variables. So if you're trying to predict price or if you're trying to predict revenue or if you're trying to predict uh, the age of a particular person, those are all things to do with regression because it's a sliding scale. So in this case, because we are trying to predict price and it is a sliding scale or a continuous variable, we're going to be selecting regression. 
Now, under here, the next thing that you sort of need to change or not change is the validation split. So basically, whenever you create a machine learning model, the best practice process is to split up your data set into a training and testing data set. So the reason that we do this is to prevent against the phenomenon known as overfitting. Basically, what we're trying to prevent is that the model works really well on the data set that we've trained it on, but performs really crap on outside real world data. So training the model on a data set known as the training data set basically means we train the model on a reserved section of the data. We then go and take that exact same model and we test it against a set of data it's never seen before. This basically means that hopefully when we deploy this into production or the real world, it's gonna perform just as well when we trained it as it does on the real world data set. So in this case, we're gonna leave our train, test and hold out data sets constant. And what we're going to do is we're going to add our estimators. Estimators are really just fancy terms for algorithms that we're going to apply across our data. So let's hit add estimators. And what we're actually gonna do is we're just going to select them all for now because we just want the best model for our particular data. So let's hit add. And you can see that we've now got our estimators here. Then what we can do is hit next and this will start training our models. Now this might take a little bit of time as it's actually going through every single data set, or sorry, every single row and they're evaluating and building that predictive model. Now what you may wanna do at this time is sort of leave it running and eventually come back. Now what you'll eventually get are a bunch of different metrics that allow you to evaluate how good or that model's predictive ability is. Once you've done that, you can save and eventually deploy. Alrighty, so you can see that our models have finished training and you can see the differing valuation metrics shown here. So you've got root mean squared error, mean squared error, the R2 score, explained variance, mean absolute error, as well as the last evaluation. Now, what's really important here is the R2 score. So you can see that our linear regression algorithm has scored best. So although the GBT regressor algorithm has a lower mean absolute error. Now, the R2 score basically shows you how much, or it's a measure of how much the model explains the variance in the predicted features. So in this case, we're basically saying that the model or our linear regression model is able to explain 93.8% of the variance in price, which means it's probably gonna have the best predictive ability when we apply it to our test set. So in this case, we're going to be sticking with our linear regression model and pushing forward with that. So I mean, that's a reasonably good um, metric in terms of how well it performs. So what we'll do is we'll hit save and hit save. So once we've saved our model, we can then start looking at deploying it. So this sort of wraps up building our actual predictive model. So just to recap, so what we did is we imported our data, we trained it across a bunch of algorithms, and now we've evaluated it and picked the best one. So we've got our predictive model. In the next video, what we're gonna look at is how to deploy this model so that we can use it using a REST API. If you enjoyed this video, guys, be sure to like, share, and subscribe it. You'll be doing me a huge favor. Thanks so much for watching. Peace.